and there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Hebrews 4, verse 13. The Weist Greek translation says, And there is not a thing created which is hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and laid bare to his eyes, to whom we must give an account. The Amplified Version says, And not a creature exists that is concealed from his sight, but all things are open and exposed, naked and defenseless to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Lewis Schaefer said, It may be a secret sin on earth, but it is an open scandal in heaven. Men have many excuses for their sin. Instead of repenting of them, they develop ways to excuse their sin. Here are different ways men do this. Number one, nobody's perfect. Number two, I am only human. Number three, we're going to sin anyway. Number four, God knows my heart. Number five, only God can judge me. Number six, it's someone else's fault that I do this. Number seven, my acts aren't hurting anyone. Number eight, what I'm doing works for me and makes me feel happy. Number nine, God's grace covers my sin. Number ten, God loves people too much to punish sin. Number eleven, there's no such thing as sin. Number twelve, I don't believe in God. The Bible is wrong. And lastly, number thirteen, I'm in charge of my own life and destiny. Scripture is very clear that God will judge all mankind and no sin will go unpunished. Listen to the following scriptures. Proverbs 15 verse 11, hell and destruction are before the Lord. So how much more the hearts of the sons of men? 1 Corinthians 4 verse 5, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to the light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. Romans 2, 4 through 6. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? But in accordance with your hardness and impotent heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. Romans 2 verse 16, Paul says, In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Acts 17, 30-31 Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Psalm 33, 13 through 15, the Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From his dwelling place, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all, he who understands all their works. As Jesus taught his disciples, there is nothing concealed that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. The all-knowing God knows our actions, our locations, our thoughts, our words, our ways, and even our motives. Remember that the context is the word of God which penetrates like a sharp sword the innermost part of our being, which leaves no detail or aspect of our light hidden from his gaze. A.W. Tozer once said, God knows instantly and effortlessly all matter in all matters, all mind in every mind, all spirit in all spirits, all being in every being, all creaturehood in all creatures, all law in every law, all relations, all causes, all thoughts, all mysteries, all feelings, all desires, every unuttered secret, all thrones and dominions, all personalities, 
all things visible and invisible in heaven and in earth, motion, space, time, life, death, good, evil, heaven, and hell. But all things are naked and open. We can hide from others. We can even do a good job of hiding from ourselves. But how do we hide from the one before whom all hearts are open and all desires known? We cannot. We cannot hide from God. Given that we are naked before him, there is nothing to hide in or behind. For in the unredeemed, this is bad news. Just as Romans 2 says, they are treasuring up for themselves wrath in the day of wrath. To reject God's offer of forgiveness and cling to one's sin is to accumulate more of God's wrath and earn a severe judgment. Listen to the warning to the church in Thyatira in Revelation chapter 2. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you, because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants, to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts, and I will give to each one of you according to your works. God gives men time to repent through his goodness, but if they fail to repent, only divine judgment awaits them. Contrast this with the redeemed, God's goodness leads us to repentance and salvation. For the believer who is redeemed, the only judgment they will face is a judgment of their works leading to reward. For we, believers, must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, yet each one may receive things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians 3, 13 through 15 says, Each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet so as through fire. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. There will be two major judgments, the Bema Seat of Christ for believers and the Great White Throne Judgment for unbelievers. Which one do you want to be present at? Remember, there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account.